Hey, this is Jim from DeBerry Direct again. I want to go over a different project we're doing today. There's some teak table tops. They're the actual leaves that make the table larger. They remove them, put them in, make the table larger or smaller. The yacht brought them to us because the sauce hinges were put in wrong and we need to repair them. So what we're going to do today is go over how to properly install a sauce hinge, how to make a jig for it. I'm going to give you two options for a way to make a jig for a sauce hinge. It's very simple um, and I like to give everybody two options including the tax man. I can tell him he can either leave vertically or horizontally, it's his choice. So I'm going to give you two choices for how to make a hinge jig. Um, we'll bring in on this and show the uh, damage on the top of this. You can pretty easily see how they're dented in those locations. Right. Okay, got the two holes cut in the thing and got doing all this right here where you can see it real easy. Um, Tools cut, I made a quick line across the tube, I cut it out with a jigsaw right now. That's option two. Okay, All right, so we're using a uh, laminate router, top bearing bit. Got a little uh, straight edge going across the top of the two holes. Real simple stuff. I don't have to have a lot of tools or a lot of common sense, just follow me. Okay, I'm going to flip it around to the other side. Option number two that we have here, we're going to show you how to do that. This is like if you're um, measurement challenged or anything else, get some of this stuff. AP7, you can get that at fiberglass coatings. Add some cream to it. It's basically a polyester hardener. What we've done is we've taken a hinge, coated it with blue tape. Two layers of that. We're just going to fill around it. Okay, you can kill it. Okay, we're back. So you saw me filling that earlier. Again, that was just tape. A lot of times we'll do wax on the tape, just like a mold release wax. You can get that. At you know, any fiberglass store or whatever, it, wherever you purchase it. But mold release wax, this is a small piece and for the video demonstration, I didn't put it on there. But you can see it's stuck inside the board. And then it's filled on both sides and I just cleaned up the excess before it dried. And then we're just gonna just simply push it out. Using my thumbs to get it out. I'll work it a little bit both ways. This is exactly why you put wax on it, because it's a little hard as you can see. So I'm going to take these two boards. The wax process, you should always put three coats of wax on. And uh, just letting it dry between coats. Okay, so the hinge came out without the tape exactly what you want and as the videos go on I'm going to show you how to do a lot of really neat stuff for making router jigs using this type of material and using a filler there's some things where I don't do it manually like try to make a little jig I always use filler especially for corners of the tables and stuff like that but we're going to go over all that I'm going to teach you everything I know you just have to be willing to pay attention all right now you look at that that actually is perfect. That fits in there. I'm going to show you this one. You can bring it up on that. 
that's actually a really good little router jig now for this. You see it fits tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this one out. You see how tight it came out of there. It came out almost like I glued it in. I'm going to set that one over there. And then, to be very honest with you, this is probably the one I'm going to use. And the reason why, is you can still see that fits the fits nice all the way around. But here's the um, here's the reason why I'm probably going to use this one. The tape actually adds each layer of tape. It's about three thousandths of an inch. I went around with two layers. That's six thousandths of an inch all the way around. Now, you have to remember these are exterior parts. So when I wrote them out, we have to fill it back in with varnish and finish so that it doesn't get water inside there. So with the one that is actually routed a little oversized, when that gets varnished, it'll fit in there really nice and snug. So now we have a rotor jig to be able to set on the back sides of those and cut it out. I'll do a real quick demonstration on the next video about making this one. Because obviously, as you can see, the way these hinges are designed, what I cut out for is insetting this lower part, the upper part. The lower part we're going to have to cut out as well. So that's going to be a different jig, a smaller jig that indexes with this one. And we'll go over that on the next video. So we hope you like this video, and hope you have an excellent rest of the day. Thanks for watching, and I'll show you the rest of it later. Thank you.